today we're going to go over conversation. All right. We're going to go over conversation and why that is so important to make sure that our conversations are upon the correct things. All right. Upon the commandments of the most high God. And we're going to give you scriptures, scriptures and show you why that is important. All right. Um, first off, first and foremost, um, Soldier Daniel, could you give me the definition of conversation? So conversation, an informal talk involving two people or a small group of people. The act of taking in any informal way. Right. Something that is similar to a spoken conversation. Right. So it says the informal exchange of ideas by spoken words. An informal talk involving two people or a small group of people. Why? Because when you're conversating with somebody, you have to actually be in front of that person. You're not, it's not possible to have a conversation with a whole crowd of people. So what it's basically saying is a conversation is when you're talking amongst one or more persons or a small group of people. All right. So now let's go to the book of Second Timothy, chapter three, verse 16. So once again, the topic for today is conversation. So keep that in mind. Just keep that on the screen so everybody understands what a conversation actually is. All right. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse 16. We're going to start off with that. The chapter three and verse 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture. Is given by inspiration of God. It says all what? All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All right, go ahead. And it's profitable for doctrine, uh -huh. for reproof, uh -huh. for correction, uh -huh. for instruction in righteousness. Right. So it says all scripture, meaning everything written in this Bible is given, up, given to us by the most high God. All right. And it says that it is made for doctrine, for correction in righteousness and instructions all right so basically everything that's written in this bible is an instructions for the israelite man and the israelite woman all the way down to the child all right so even in our conversations we should be able to find a scripture that tells us how we're supposed to talk to one another all right and what our conversation should actually be about so with that being said let's go to the book of second corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 all right, because everybody in here considers themselves as repentant, correct? Yes, all praise to the most high. All right, can anybody tell me what that word actually means? Is it a mic out there? Um, just cry loud. Um, Mordecai, say again. Right. So it says to go back to keeping the law. So if you're going back, stand up one more time. If you go back to keeping the law, then what are you not doing? Right. You're not breaking the laws or you're not doing the things that you that you used to do. Right. All right. So now read that. Second Corinthians 5, 17. The book of Second Corinthians, chapter five and verse 17. Mm -hmm. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Right. It says, so if any man, and that goes for the woman as well, the Bible is written in masculine form. So it says men, but this applies to the man and woman. Read that part again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, uh -huh. he is a new creature. So if any man or woman be in Christ, that's what repentance is. We're not doing the old things that we used to do. And now we in Christ. All right. It says that he is a what? A new creature, a new creature. That means that what? The things that we used to do, we don't do no more. All right. Keep going. Old things are passed away. It says what things? Old things are passed away. It says old things are passed away. Go ahead. Behold, all things are become new. How many? All things are become new. Right. So all things, meaning everything that you used to do, you don't do no more. Everything that you used to do, it's become new. Right. So can somebody give me an example of what the all things is talking about? All things, all things are become new because remember, we don't do what we used to do. We repent it. Now we're in Christ. So everything that we do is different. But what are some examples of the things that we're supposed to be new in? Yes, sir. What's your name again? Set your name again, bro. Shalom, leadership, brother Micaiah. Brother Micaiah. All right, go ahead. So old things that we used to do before we got into the truth, like going to the club, right. we um, being a whoremonger, those sorts of things. Right. Okay. Okay. Cool. Yes, sir. That's a good example. 
Um, looking for something else. Anybody else? Yes, sir. What you got? Young Prophet. Young Prophet. Ruel. Ruel. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, bro. Is like the way that you put yourself out to the the way that you present yourself. Right, right. That's a good example. The way that you present present yourself. All right. What are some different ways that you can present yourself? How's that? Like keeping fringes. Right. Okay. Keeping um, God's commandments. Yeah. Right. And you could show. You could be like, like when people ask you what are they for, you can give them the scripture. All right. Showing your light. Um. Okay. Good example. You. you okay. We're not like walking with our pants sagging and stuff. Right. So the way that you kept. So that would be your dress code. All right. So the way that you dress. Right. All right. That's a good example. Anybody else? Brother Yakuba. Shalom leadership. I would say the things that we meditate on. Right. Because before we could meditate on money, we could meditate on uh, building ourselves up in other areas, but now we meditate on the scriptures. Okay. So, yeah. The way we meditate. All right. So the things that we study, the things that we uh, cast our mind upon. Yes, sir. Last one. And then we're going to go into it. Um, young bro. Bro. Um, the way, the way you talk. There we go. That's one right there. All right. Because remember, the, the whole topic of today's class is conversation. All right. So the new things that we do in Christ is it considers our talk, the way we dress, the way we act, the things that we think upon um, all the way down to what the things that we eat. All right. Everything that we do changes. All right. So now let's go back into it. Ephesians chapter four, verse 20. Actually, read verse 18 again. And then we're going to get Ephesians. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 5 and verse 18. Uh-huh. And all things are of God. Right. So it says, uh, from the last scripture, it says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are new. All things are of God. All right. So when it says all things are of God, meaning that everything that we do new is according to the scriptures. All right. Because before we wasn't doing that. We did any and everything that we wanted to do. But now that we come into this truth, we repent and we a new creature in Christ. Now, everything that we do is of the most high God. All right. And that's keeping God's commandments. So Ephesians chapter four, verse 22. Let's see how that applies to our conversations. All right. The book of Ephesians chapter four and verse 22. Mm -hmm. That ye put off concerning the former conversation. Right. So remember the other scripture that we just read, it says that we're supposed to put off the old man. All right. Old things are passed away, including our what? Read that again. That ye put off concerning the former conversation. So even all the way down to our conversation, we're supposed to put that off as well. All right. Go ahead. The old man. Mm hmm. Which is corrupt uh -huh. according to deceitful lust. It says it's corrupt according to deceitful lust. Meaning that once again, we did any and everything that we wanted to do. Why? Because it was pleasurable to us. We was raised in a world where mom said whatever she wanted to say. Whenever she got mad, she snapped on pops or your, your cousin that you hung around. Whenever they got heated, they did whatever they wanted to do. So the same thing for us. We learned those examples and we found pleasure in those things. Oh, somebody said something to me. Oh, I got to pop off. You see what I'm saying? Those are the pleasures that we sought. So it says those things corrupted us. All right. Why? Because from birth all the way up, we were deceived. We were um, in the midst of sin. We lived in sin. So we were taught that way. And that's all we knew. Right. So read that part one more, one more time. The book of Ephesians, chapter 4 and verse 22. Uh-huh. That ye put off concerning the former conversation. Right. The old man. Right. Which is corrupt right. according to the deceitful lust. According to the deceitful lust. All right. So now, 1 Peter 4, verse 11. How are we supposed to speak? All right. And then we're going to get some examples of those evil conversations. All right. Let's go to 1 Peter 4 and 11. What are we supposed to be speaking about? What are our conversations supposed to be about? Read that. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. If any man speak. So if any man what? If any man speak. So if any man speak or you conversate. All right. To a brother or sister. Go ahead. Let him speak as the oracles of God. Let him speak as the oracles of God. All right. Speaking about God's commandments. And some people might just think, oh, I, I don't really know too many scriptures. So I can't really talk about, you know, the Bible all day. But that's not just what it's talking about. It's talking about things that's positive. Because even when it comes down to um, what we read about in Titus 2, what's the, the duty of a woman? 
She's supposed to love her children. She's supposed to love her husband. Um, when we get to Proverbs 31, for a woman, she's supposed to provide for her household. So things of that nature. Sisters can talk about sewing or about cooking, things of that nature. Even um, brothers, you could talk about something that's, um, that's pertaining to this truth. Different titles or different um, talents that you want to learn. You see what I'm saying? That's going to benefit the truth. It don't always have to be about a certain scripture. You don't have to know every scripture in the Bible, but as long as it's pertaining to the scriptures, all right, pertaining to the, um, the commandments of the Most High. Uh, for an example, Philippians chapter 2, I mean 1 verse 27. Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. Whenever you get it, sir. The book of Philippians, chapter 1 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Right. So your conversation should be of the gospel of Christ. All right. Once again, it's going right back into the commandments. What is going to help us or benefit us in this truth? Our conversations. All right. And now we're going to get some evil communications or conversations that we shouldn't be speaking of. Good. Hey, right? also, before you go there, let me yes, add sir. one precept because you're speaking about the woman. All right. Go to Proverbs 31 and verse uh, 26 real quick because you're speaking about the woman and her conversation. Yes, sir. And as you said, you're finna give an example of the um, negative connotation with conversation. Now I'm going to give you an example of a woman speaking. A uh, righteously conversation. It's not just scripture, scripture, scripture. Read that. 26. She openeth her mouth. She with, does what? She openeth her mouth. With what? With wisdom. Read. And in her tongue. And in her tongue. Read. Is the law of kindness. So that's letting you know that her conversation is godly and in accordance of what the Most High wants. Because a lot of times, we sisters read um, that in Sirach where it says, a loving woman is silent. That's When it says silent, it's not saying that you don't speak at all. All right, so make sure you take that into note. To add on to what Officer O.C. was saying, go to First Peter's real quick, chapter 3, verse 1. Because uh, with our women, with our sisters, even in a marriage, a relationship between a man and a woman, there's a certain uh, type of conversation or discretion or mannerism that your tongue has to be in even to overcome the spirit of a man sometimes. All right. You all you women, you have power when you speak correctly, according to the scripture. So let's get that example. Read that. The book of first Peter, chapter three and verse one. Likewise, ye wives. It says likewise, ye wives, because above this is speaking of the order of the man or the church have to be in order. The woman has to be in order as well as the man in the church, right? Read, come on. Be in subjection to your own husband. As the man is in subjection to Christ, so must be the woman in subjection to the husband. That's the order. Come on. That if any obey not the word. That if your man, your 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 uh, husband may be off or going off in the scriptures or may be wicked, what happens? Read. They also may be without the word won by the conversation of the wise. Because your conversation dictates your actions, your example. So if he sees through the scriptures that your conversation is holy and it's being shown through your actions, it's going to provoke a thought in his mind and be like, you know what, maybe this way she's not yelling at me how she used to no more. She's not treating me how she used to. She makes sure I'm provided for before I go out. Everything is in your conversation. All right, like I said. Even with you sisters in the truth, when you want to try to win over your man a certain kind of way to go out on a date or something like that for the night, do things, right? You have a way to speak with your husband, all right? Um, one more real quick, because he began, Officer Anathasia began and says, how or what should you be speaking of? Go to Sirach real quick, chapter 9, verse 15. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9 and verse 15. Let thy talk that be what? let thy talk uh -huh. be with the wise. Be with the wise, amongst the wise, the those of wisdom. That's us, right? Read, come on. And all so that what it's going into a little bit is saying is saying your conversation should be more with wisdom and with the wise than with the ungodly. Y'all understand? Come on, read on. And all thy communication, and everything you speak, your communication, your example, what you show, read. In the law of the Most High. That's what your conversation should be most mostly about. All right. All praises. So now, with that being said, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed off what um, Officer, Officer Tazawan just uh, pulled out. Go to um, Sirach chapter 13, verse 15. The book of Sirach chapter 13, verse 15. Because, um, like what he said, we should always be around brothers and sisters that have understanding of the scriptures. Um, I know... Um, for an example, when a lot of us come into the truth, we tend to be around 
somebody else that's newer in the truth as well. Somebody else that's newer in the truth and that doesn't have much experience in the commandments that really don't know what they're doing. They're still trying to figure their way out as well. But according to the scriptures, we're always always supposed to be around brothers and sisters that actually have experience and that know better. All right. Why? Because eventually that's going to build you up and then you're going to be that person. You're going to be that example for the next brother or sister. All right. Um, go to Sirach chapter 13, verse 15. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus uh -huh. chapter 13 and verse 15. Every beast loveth his like uh -huh. and every man loveth his neighbor. Right. All flesh consorted according to his kind. Right. It says all flesh um, consorted according to his kind. So uh, what's the quote? They say that tell me who your friends are and I'll uh, show you who you are. So it's basically the same thing. It's basically saying that if you constantly around a brother and sister that likes to murmur or a brother or sister that likes to talk about other people, backbite, things of that nature, then that's showing you what kind of person you really are. So that's why the scriptures told us to, uh, we're supposed to be around brothers and sisters that have understanding. Why? Because that tells you what kind of person you are and what kind of person you're actually going to be later on when in this truth. All right. So we should always try to seek better understanding and try to build ourselves up. All right. And that's going to determine who you'll be around and the people that you um, that you're constantly around. All right. The people that you're constantly talking to and getting advice from as well. Um, go to the book of First Timothy, chapter four, verse twelve. All right. And this is why it's so important, because we got to understand that it's not just for us. It's not just for ourselves. But when you come into this truth, you got brothers and sisters that's actually watching you when they come into the truth. They looking for the righteous examples to follow. All right. Same thing for us. When we um, watch saw those videos online, when we come in here, we're looking at the leadership because that's the example that the most I set forth for us to follow. So same thing for the brothers and sisters. You might think that, oh, I'm a visitor or I'm a member or whatnot, but you actually got other brothers and sisters that's looking at you as well for examples. All right. Um, read that. The book of First Timothy, chapter four and verse 12. Mm -hmm. Let no man despise thy youth. Right. But be thou an example uh -huh. of the believers. It says be thou an example of the believers. Everybody in here should be a believer. All right. Believer in Christ. That's why we all repent it. We got fringes on our clothes. We in here keeping the Sabbath day. It says that be thou an example of the believers. All right. Go ahead. In word. So how are you supposed to be an example? In word. In word. In your words. In your speech. All right. Go ahead. In conversation. In conversation. All right. So that goes with whenever you inside this building or you outside this building. If a brother and sister comes about and they, they let's say you at Walmart, they, they walk up on you having a conversation with a, uh, another brother or sister or your wife or whoever, your conversation should be about something that's lawful. You see what I'm saying? It shouldn't be about something that's worldly uh, because we see plenty of examples of that um, on the work, um, on the job where brothers and sisters, we go to um, our workplaces and what they talking about. They always talking about the same things. All right. Same things that we talked about in the world. They see the drugs. You see the women, um, sports, money, it's always about the same thing. Our people are always occupied in evil, all right? So we're that little bit of light that our people actually have to follow, all right? That's why the Most High told us to let our light shine. Um, go to Judah chapter 8, verse 24. I want to add on to what you just said, actually, because when... We're in the when we leave outside of these doors, everything when we in here is fine, it's dandy. We all speak godly. But when people of the world see you, they should already know they can't come to you any kind of way. They can't come to you, speak to you about any kind of thing. When they see you, their conversation changes. It's like, oh no, I can't talk to him about this because he's gonna correct me with God's word. Y'all understand that? Right. So that's where you weigh your level of faith or where you at in this truth is. If they can come and talk to you about God knows what. You need to examine yourself and your conversation. They should be like, nah, he's an Israelite. Nah, this sister, she, you know, she's a little different. She'll come at you a certain kind of way. She'll tell you to stop talking about what you're talking about. I don't want to hear about brothers and all sisters and all that kind of stuff. You understand? Right. So that's when it goes to you showing your example, it's all in your word, meaning if the scriptures is coming out of your mouth and your conversation. All right. All praises. Go ahead. The book of Judith, chapter 8 and verse 24. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren. It says, let us show an example, all right? An example to our brethren, all right? So for the men, the younger brothers and sisters, brothers that's in here, they're going to follow your example, all right? Because they're trying to figure out what it actually means to be an Israelite man. Because we've been 
brought up in the world on how to be uh, a nigger. All right. We don't know nothing else. So now when we come into this truth, we got to find out our way. We got to become a new creature once again, like the um, scriptures say. And we got to find that example on what to follow. All right. Uh, for the sisters as well. Like the scriptures say, you're supposed to teach the younger woman, the younger sisters that come in, in this truth that really don't have much experience. They're going to look at your examples. All right. How does sister put a hair wrap on? Uh, what kind of how long is her skirt that she, you know, that she wear? Uh, what the sister's talking about? When I walk in the corner, they're they having a, a deep conversation about that. What are they talking about? You see what I'm saying? Y'all are always an example for the next generation or the next people that's coming in. All right. Also for the children as well. They're always looking at us. Um. So now with that being said, we're going to go into some of the bad examples of the things that we're not supposed to be speaking of. All right. So we're going to go touch on babbling. All right. Um, so could you pull that up on Miriam's Worcester? Babbling or babble, babble. And then we're going to get the book of Sirach chapter 20 and verse 5. So once again, this is a very important topic because... We go through our, our daily lives day in day and we have conversations every day. That's one of the biggest things are the things that we do probably most of all throughout our daily lives. We having a conversation, all right? Either it's here, it's outside of truth. We're talking to our boss. We're talking to our family in the world, whoever. But our conversation, no matter what or who we're talking to, it should always be a right, all right? Um, it says... I'll read it. All right, go ahead. Babble. To talk enthusiastically or excessively. Mm -hmm. To utter meaningless or unintelligible sounds. Right. It says to utter meaningless or unintelligible sounds. All right. So now let's see what the scripture says about that. Sirach 20 verse 5. Basically, everything that you're saying is, is worthless. It's pointless. All right. Profitable. Unprofitable. It says to talk enthusiastically or excessively. Meaning you could be talking a lot and it don't mean nothing. All right. Um, read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 20 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. There is one that keepeth silence and is found wise. Right. And another by much babbling becometh hateful. It says there is one that by much babbling becometh hateful because nobody likes somebody who talks a lot. All right. You're always trying to avoid that person. Oh, here we come again. You're trying to duck around the corner because you know that. And this brother, every time he come around, he got a mouthful and he ain't talking about nothing. Or he or she. It could be a sister as well. It says that one that has much babbling, they become it hateful. All right, go ahead. Some man holdeth his tongue uh -huh. because he have not to answer. All right, go ahead. And some keepeth silence knowing his time. Right, so that's how we're supposed to be. We're supposed to keep our silence knowing our time, all right? Um, like for an example, the scriptures tell us about a young man. When you're around the elders, that's not the time to speak. Because, once again, you're a young man in this truth. You don't know what you're talking about. For the sisters as well, you don't know what you're talking about. You can get yourself in trouble, all right? You're trying to make yourself equal to an a, a elder that's in this truth. You're trying to make yourself equal with them like you know what they're talking about. But it says that you should know when to speak. You should know when time, what time it is to actually put your bid in, all right? Only when somebody asks of you. That's what the scriptures say. All right, go ahead. Verse 7, uh -huh. a wise man will hold his tongue till he see opportunity. Right, there we go. It says a wise man, he will hold his tongue till he see opportunity, all right? The perfect time. Somebody, uh, let's say Cap up here, he might ask me for a precept. But before that, I'm not trying to bid in, oh, oh Cap, I got something I want to add on to that. Nah, because I don't know what I'm talking about. You see what I'm saying? Same thing for the upper leadership. Same thing for um, the brothers and sisters that's been here for a while. It's best to just be quiet and learn all right that's our whole purpose of being here to learn and then eventually at some point in time you're going to become a leader where you can give instruction to the people all right um go ahead but a babbler uh -huh. and a fool uh -huh. will regard no time so a person that's a babbler and a fool that's what it's talking about a fool is a babbler it says that he's not going to regard the time he don't care when it is he's going to throw his bid in. i got a precept for that i got i got a precept for that you don't know what you're talking about so it says a fool and a babbler, he don't know what time to speak. All right, go ahead. He that useth many words uh -huh. shall be abhorred. Uh -huh. And he that taketh to himself authority therein shall be hated. Right. So going again, once again, that person that speaks a lot, he's going to be hated. All right. Um, Second Timothy chapter two, verse 16. So now let's see what the Most High God says about that. All right. Once again, we're going into the examples of that we're not supposed to follow. All right, we're supposed to guide our conversations. All right, we're not supposed to be babbling, according to the scriptures. Read that. 
the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 16. Uh -huh. But shun profane and vain babblings. All right, go ahead. For they will increase unto more ungodliness. It says they will increase unto more ungodliness. So basically it's saying that babblings, is, uh, it has a domino effect, all right? Somebody could be speaking, going on, blah, 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 blah. And they end up saying something that they're not supposed to um, have said, all right? Somebody could have shared a secret with them, and then they're saying, no, they talking, 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 and then they reveal the secret of a, um, a brother or sister. And the person that they're speaking to can't hold their words. They might go and share that with somebody else. And what that's going to do? That's going to sow discourse against the person that actually told them that secret. You see what I'm saying? It's a domino effect. It can go many ways, all right? Um, read that part again. But shun profane and vain babbling, uh -huh. for they will increase unto more ungodliness. It says it will increase unto more ungodliness, all right? So now let's see how. Sirach 19, verse 6. It says it will increase unto more ungodliness, all right? So now let's see. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus. Chapter 19 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. He that can rule his tongue shall live without strife. It says, he that can rule his tongue. If you know the time to be quiet, you know the time to speak. It says, you're going to live without strife. I mean, you're not going to have too many problems. All right, go ahead. And he that hateth babbling shall have less evil. All right, go ahead. Rehearse not unto another that which is told unto thee. Right, so that could be a form of babbling. It says, rehearse not unto another something that's told unto you because you can have a brother and sister that actually trust you, that want to come to you, that want to talk to you about, you know, this and that, their personal life, the situations that they're going through. But if you are babbling, and you're going around telling this and that, and you're just speaking about things that don't even matter, you can end up slipping up, all right, and telling that person's business. Go ahead. And thou shalt nev fare never the worst. All right, you will never fare the worst, meaning you're never going to have any problems. You're not going to have to fall into those situations. All right, go ahead. Whether it be to a friend uh -huh. or a foe, all right. talk not of other men's lives. It says talk not of other men's lives. All right, that's why the scriptures tell us to have one counselor out of a thousand. Because you're not supposed to go around telling everybody your business as well. All right, because what that eliminates is... You telling everybody your business, and then you got to worry about, oh, I, I wonder if so-and-so knows about what's going on in my household. All right? It says, have one counselor out of a thousand. And it says, when you do know something or somebody do confide in you, don't go talking about their they personal lives amongst everybody. All right? Why? Because that person actually trusted you. Um, go ahead. And if thou canst without offense, uh -huh. reveal them not. All right, go ahead. For he heard and observed thee. And when the time cometh, he will hate thee. Right, when the time cometh, that person will going to hate you. Why? Because they ended up finding out that they trusted you to tell them something. You told them something, and then they say, no, it got out to everybody. They trusted you. Now you got hatred towards that brother or that sister. All right, go ahead. If thou hast heard a word, uh -huh. let it die with thee. Uh -huh. And be bold. It will not burst thee. All right, go ahead. A fool travaileth with a word as a woman in labor of a child. Right, so that's going right back into a babbler. It says a fool travaileth, meaning they can't hold a word for nothing. That's just like when a, a woman has a child. When she's in labor, she's ready to have that child, right? So it's the same thing. When a fool has a word within them or a babbler, they ready to get that thing out. They ready to tell, I got to tell somebody about this. I got to tell somebody about this. You see what I'm saying? That's the example that the scriptures is giving us, all right? So you should always consider the actions of somebody else. The things that they have told you shouldn't be rehearsed to anybody else. All right, go ahead. Verse 12. Uh -huh. As an arrow that sticketh in a man's thigh, uh -huh. so is a word within a fool's belly. It says so is a word in a fool's belly. All right, meaning they can't hold that thing. All right, it's like a prick that's in their side. They got to get it out. All right, like a splinter in your finger. Um, Go to verse 16. Now, let's see if that situation actually happens to you. All right. You ended up telling somebody something or something personal or whatever, and you end up finding out, all right? Let's see what you're supposed to do or what things are you supposed to consider before you um, approach that person, all right? Read on. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 19 and verse 16. Uh-huh. There is one that slippeth in his speech, uh -huh. but not from his heart. So it's some that slippeth in their speech, but not from their heart. Some people genuinely might not have said it, or it might not have stepped out on um, their mouth on purpose, all right? They could have had the slip of the tongue. That's what the scripture is saying. But really in their mind, they really didn't mean to do it, all right? Go ahead. And who is he that have not offended with his tongue? Right, so it says you should always be willing to forgive a brother or sister because that happens. It says that we all have been in that situation where we slip, had a slip of the tongue. Oh, I didn't mean to say that. I was just talking. 
I was speaking too fast. I didn't even mean to say that. I ain't even I ain't even mean to tell you that. You see what I'm saying? So you should always have that mindset to oh dang, let me forget her brother because maybe he didn't mean to say it. All right. Um verse 13. Verse 13. Admonish a friend. Mm -hmm. It may be he have not done it. Right, go ahead. And if he have not done it, that he do it no more. Right. So you should be able to approach that brother and be like, you know, he he could we say it, Okay, yeah, if he have done it, then it says that you shall approach that brother and you're supposed to uh, forgive that brother. Matthew chapter uh, um, 18, verse 15. You're supposed to forgive him, right? Because even if he did, did it, you're supposed to correct him and so that he wouldn't do it again. All right. So he had to. So he wouldn't have to go through that situation once again. All right. He's supposed to learn from that certain situation. Read that part again. Verse 13. Uh-huh. Admonish a friend. Uh-huh. It may be he have not done it. Right. He might have not done it. All right. Go ahead. And if he have done it, and if he did do it, go ahead, that he do it no more. Right. You admonish him so he don't do it no more. My bad. The brother might be sorry. All right. He says, I ain't even mean to do that. I didn't even mean to have that conversation with that brother. All right. Go ahead. Admonish thy friend. Uh-huh. It may be that he have not said it. Right. Or it could be to the point where he haven't even said it. Somebody could be lying on the brother or sister. All right. Go ahead. And if he have, uh -huh. that he speak it not again. Right, go ahead. Admonish a friend. Uh -huh. For many times it is a slander. Right, it says many times somebody could be slandering that person, all right? So now that goes into the next topic. What is slander? Um, slander in the Miriam's Western Dictionary. So it says you're supposed to admonish your friend because somebody could be slandering that brother or sister. So now let's see what that actually means, all right? And then we're going to get the book of Proverbs chapter 10, verse 18. Whenever you're ready, sir. Slander. To utter slander against, defame. Right. All right. It says to utter slander against or defame. All right. So somebody could be lying on that person. All right. It says to utter slander against or you're trying to defame that person. And that really comes with um, covetousness. You have jealousy towards their brother or sister, or you might have hatred towards that brother or sister that did something to you in the past. And you slander against that person. You're trying to defame them. Why? Because you have hatred towards them, right? So now let's get what the Most High says about that. Proverbs 20 verse, um, 10 verse 18. The about book of, slander. The book of Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 18. Uh huh. He that hideth hatred with lying lips. And he that uttereth a slander is a fool. It says he that uttereth slander is a fool, right? Why? Because when you read the top of that verse, it says that he hideth hatred with his lips. He really has hatred for that brother or that sister. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to go to another person and he's trying to let out that anger that he has within for that person, right? He's trying to defame that person. He's trying to make them seem like they're not all that they actually seem to be. Why? Because I actually don't really like them like that. I don't even know why you like them like that. You see what I'm saying? That's the, that's what slander is actually going into. All right, um, read that part one more time. He that hate he that hideth hatred with lying lips, mm -hmm. and he that uttereth a slander is a fool. Right, because when it comes down to it, that's actually going down to hatred. And you read about first uh, first John chapter three verse fifteen. The Most High says, if you have hatred for your brother or sister, then you are a murderer. So that will make you a fool because obviously you don't understand the judgment behind that thing. All right. So that's why the Most High God says that that a hatred is going to equal into murder. All right. You're not supposed to do that. That's what slandering actually goes into. All right. Go to um, first Peter chapter two, verse one. First Peter two, verse one. And then we're going to get Proverbs chapter six, verse 16. Actually, no, just go to that. Proverbs six, 16. All right, so now let's see once again how the Most High God feels about slander, how he feels about that hatred that you have for that brother or sister. All right. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6 and verse 16. Uh-huh. These six things doth the Lord hate, yea, seven are an abomination unto him. Right, so it says these six things, we're about to read about six things, things that the Most High God hate, and then it says the seventh it says he is an abomination to the Most High God. So that means that's the highest level of disgust. All right, go ahead. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, uh -huh. and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, mm -hmm. feet that be swift in running to mischief, right. a false witness that speaketh lies, right. and he that soweth discord among brethren. It says he that what? 
He that sowed discord among brethren. Right. So the seventh one is he that sowed discourse against among brethren. All right. So that means, once again, that's that slanderer, that brother and sister that goes behind another brother's uh, sister's back and they trying to defame that person. Why? Because they got hatred for him. So now you causing strife between another brother and sister that probably had a, a good relationship. That's why the most High God says we're not supposed to do that. Right. So now um, let's even think about the situation. If we eliminated that that one situation, right, when it comes to slander, then we wouldn't have the problems that we have. Because let's say I got a cool relationship with Soldier Aaron, right? Then next thing you know, another brother comes to me. He says, hey, bro, you know, he, he did this and he did that to me. So now in my mind, even though I know the brother, he cool, right? I know that thing. He probably would never do nothing like that. But now the thoughts in my head, well, like, well, dang, maybe he might be like that. You know what I'm saying? Now, instead of me actually going to the brother, I'm thinking that the brother is wicked. You see what I'm saying? Everything he do, now I'm actually looking for him to be wicked according to what the um, the brother or sister just told me. You see what I'm saying? So that's actually sowing discourse amongst your brothers or your sisters. You putting that evil seed, uh, that putting that evil thought in their head, making them think um, something else about a brother or sister or evil upon them, all right? Um, read that part one more time, that last part. Verse 19, uh -huh. a false witness that speaketh lies, uh -huh. and he that soweth discord among brethren. Right, he that soweth discord among brethren, all right? Sirach chapter, um, actually let's get Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 11. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 11. So now slander, they all actually go, all they all actually relate to each other, all right? You got slandering, we got babbling, all right? And now we're going to get backbiting. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 11. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 11. Therefore, beware of murmuring, which is unprofitable, uh -huh. and refrain your tongue from backbiting. If refrain your tongue from what? From backbiting. Right. So now can we get what backbiting is? It says refrain your tongue from backbiting. All right. The definition is actually in the word. Can anybody give me an example of what backbiting may be? Does anybody know? Backbiting. Nobody? Backbiting? What you got? Mordecai. Talking behind somebody's back. Right, exactly. All right, yeah, sit on the mic. Sit on the side. Sit on the mic. My fault. Shalom. Talking behind someone's back. Right, exactly. Backbiting. You're talking behind somebody's back. All right. So we all familiar with that, but we just not familiar with the biblical term. All right. Um, read that, so backbiting. To say mean or spiteful things about a person. Such as someone who is not present. Right. So you're doing it behind that person's back. All right. It says backbiting is to say mean or spiteful things about a person such as someone who is not present. All right. So now let's read that again. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 verse 11. The book of Wisdom of Solomon chapter 1 and verse 11. Mm -hmm. Therefore, beware of murmuring which is unprofitable and reframe your tongue from backbiting. Right. For there is no word so secret. That shall go forth not in, in the mouth that in the mouth that belieth right. slayeth the soul. Right. So it says that there is no word. Anything that you say behind a person's back, it eventually is going to get back to them. All right. And it says that everything, when you read the scriptures, every word that we speak is going to be accounted for. All right. Matthew chapter 12, verse 36. So real quick, real quick. I want to ask the sister something. And it pertains to the brothers too. Um, backbiting. There's a modern day word that we call that today. What would it be? Sisters. Get the mic over here to the sister side. What do we call that? Backbiting. One word. Sister Giovanna. Give it up in the back. You mind if your wife? Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Gossiping. Very good. Gossiping. Gossiping. Now, are we supposed to gossip and backbite? No. Let's get the law on this real quick. Go to the book of James. When y'all get a chance, read the book of James chapter 3 on down. It goes into what comes out of your mouth is a weapon. All right? Like it gives certain examples about how if you put uh, a bit, a horse's bit, and uh, what you use to control a horse around with to go left and right and stop, that's in a um, horse's mouth. You can control a horse with that. Or gave, Actually, let's just read it. I'm sorry. Chapter 3, verse 3. And we're going to jump. The book of James, chapter 3 and verse 3. Behold, we put bits in a horse's mouth. Now, if you want, get a picture of a bit. Let me just get an example. Horse's bit on the thing, right? Horse's bit. Okay, that's it right there. Just for an example, right? What does it do? Come on, read on. 
Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths. Mm -hmm. That's that, that right down the screen. Come on. That they may obey us. Because that's what uh, that's what we do when we ride it. We pull it left, we pull it right, and it directs the path. Read on. And we turn about their whole body. We turn about their whole body. The point is the bit is so small and it moves the whole body. A large horse, right? Come on. Verse 4. Behold also the ships. The ships. Now, go. come, come on. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet they are turned about with a very small helm. Very small. Let's get what a picture of a helm is. A ship's helm is. Real quick. Come on. So now, keep keep the allegory going. It says a horse's mouth has a bit, and it moves the whole. A horse is big. A horse is about as as long as this table. Not as long as the table, but half as long as this table. And shoot, about as tall as this. Right, a horse is a big animal. All right, this is a ship's helm. It's small, and the ship is big, but it still is directed by that small helm. Come on. Whensoever the governor listeneth, mm -hmm. listeth, the pilot, the, the captain, read on. Even so, the tongue, even so, the tongue, what is a little member uh -huh. and boasteth great things. So, a tongue will cause wars and people to die. All right, read, come on. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Because you can't get a massive explosion without a spark. Y'all understand? That's why when we read in Sirach, I don't know if you got it yet, it says how we split, uh, how should we be able to, to quench or blow on the fire. Did we get that yet? Okay, let's get that just briefly. The book of Sirach or Ecclesiasticus chapter 28 and verse 12. If thou blow the spark. If thou blow the spark because the scriptures right here in James, it says, oh, behold, how great a matter a little fire can lift. Read on. Come on. If thou blow the spark. It shall burn. If you blow on it, it's gonna burn. It's gonna get it's gonna increase in flames. Read, come on. If thou spit upon it, but if you quench the conversation or the evil or the backbiting or the gossip, what happens to it? It shall be quenched. Uh-huh. And both these come out of thy mouth. The mouth is very, very dangerous. Back to James real quick. The book of James, chapter 3 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boast of great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. Now, the scripture says we ought not to be that way. Now, read verse 9 on down. Come on. Verse 9. Therewith, bless we God. Therewith, we say all praises. I love Jesus. I love the Lord. Most high in Christ. Bless. Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. We love him. We blessed God with our mouths, right? Read, come on. Even the Father. Even the Father, but what? Read. And therewith, curse we men. And then you curse your own brother and your own sister of your own nation. You speak evil of them. You backbite. You gossip. Y'all have to mark that. Y'all have to, because it's us coming out of the world into the truth. We may not even think just because we're speaking of the Lord's business that we're actually gossiping about somebody else. If you're not going to that person about the situation that they're involved in, you're speaking to somebody else, it's gossip. If you can't speak about some, to somebody else what you want to say to their face, it's gossip. That's evil. It's evil. And God is marking that. Y'all understand that? Come on, keep reading. Which are made after the similitude of God. Come on, read. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing uh -huh. and cursing. Out of the same mouth that you speak, you bless God, but you curse men. Read. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. That's not our custom. That's a commandment. You are not to be that way. If you find your way like that, change. Keep going, officer. All right. Um, all praises. Uh, so now... Let's go into whisperer, whisperer. So basically what I'm doing is going into the different examples or the different conversations that we read about in the scriptures, all right? Everything that we read about, just getting a, a brief or a deeper understanding of what these words actually mean. And then giving the scriptures behind it on how the Mosai feels about it, all right? So we went through backbiting, we went through slender, we went through, um, we went through babbling. So now let's go through whisperers, all right? The words that you're going to find in the Bible about conversations. Let's see. Um, actually, look up whisper. Whisper. And then we're going to get um, scriptures, scriptures about a whisperer. All right. Whisper. To speak softly with little or no vibration of the vocal cords. Uh -huh. Especially to avoid being overheard. Right. So the whole point is you're trying to avoid being overheard. But what would be the, the reason why a brother or sister would be whispering? Why would they not try to be heard? Anybody can tell me. 
Only two young men. Um, what you got, brother Jonathan? Shalom. Shalom. Uh, this, uh, the this whispering, because what they're speaking is evil. You wouldn't say that face to face, so they, they speak, speaking softly and low, so nobody else can hear. Because what right. you're saying is not good. Right. Exactly. They whispering because they know that whatever they saying, they don't want nobody else to hear because it's ungodly. All right. So now let's get a scripture on that. Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. The book of Proverbs, chapter sixteen and verse twenty eight. A forward man, so of strife. Right, a forward, talking about an evil man, all right? He brings strife or problems, all right? Go ahead. And a whisperer. A what? A whisperer. A whisperer, all right? What, basically, that goes right back into um, slanderer. That goes into a backbiting. Talking about somebody back. You're whispering so they don't hear you. Do what? Separated chief friends. They separated chief friends. So that's going right back into sowing discord. Why? Because once again, you don't want to be heard because you know that you even you speaking evil of somebody or you speaking the things that you're not supposed to be talking about. All right. So now uh, with that being said, let's go to first John chapter three, verse 20. And let's see why. Why would somebody whisper? They whisper because once again, they don't want to be heard. They know that they're not supposed to have that type of conversation. All right. Uh, read that. The book of first John chapter three and verse 20. Uh -huh. For if our heart condemn us. Right. God is greater than our heart right and knoweth all things right so can anybody does anybody know why I pulled this scripture with whisperer anybody have a clue what you got what you got Ruel? brother been raising his hand for every question Shalom um, Shalom bro because you could be talking behind somebody's back and they won't know but the most high knows because he knows all conversations and he can read your mind all right, that's that's a part of it. That's a part of it. But it's going into why somebody would whisper. Anybody else? What you got, bro? Mishael, Mishael. Hey, I'm getting bad with names. I'm tripping. Mishael. Shalom, leadership. Shalom, bro. Uh, to spread gossip. Right. Okay. So read the scripture again. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Stay right there. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 20. Listen to the first part. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. Actually, read that part again. Read the first part again. For if our heart condemn us. Our heart condemn us. What's our heart? Right, the mind, right? So if our mind condemn us, all right, then I'm going to explain if you don't get it. All right, go ahead. Read that part again. Sorry. For if our heart condemn us, uh -huh. God is greater than our heart. And know of all things. What you got? Well, we know in our communication if it's wrong or not. And right. Pretty much, God's gonna judge you. You was there. You was there. All right. Um, one more. One more. One more. You was close. Very close. Um, Azariah. You you woke. You woke. You raised your hand on purpose. All right. Go ahead. You know what the scripture about? Nah, nah, you got it. All right. Um, Do you know what the scripture is? Read it over. Man. All right, go on. You sleep I over there, man. You don't even know what the scripture is. All right, read that. The book of First John, chapter three and verse twenty. For if our heart condemn us, uh huh, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. All right, what you so got? So if we're whispering, that means our mind is condemning us. Right, exactly. So go ahead. We know it's wrong. Even more, God. Wrong. Right, right. That's the part I wanted. The first part. Our heart, our mind condemns us. That's why we whispering because we know we're not even supposed to be talking about it. All right. So basically that goes right back until we already know better. So that's why we feel the need to, oh, I got to, hey, yeah, come on, come on me for a second. We got to go in the back corner. We got to go over where nobody yet. Uh, we got to talk under our voice because our heart is condemning us. That means that we know that what we're doing is incorrect. All right. All right. Everybody understand that? All right, all praises. Uh, read that one more time. The book of 1 John, chapter 3 and verse 20. Uh -huh. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart right. and knoweth all things. So now, even much, if we know that what we're doing is wrong while we're whispering, then what you think the Most High God feels? How you think he feels about that? You think that he don't know what's going on? You see what I'm saying? Job chapter 34, verse 23. 
All right. So if our heart, if we know better, if we know we're not supposed to be doing it, then we know that the Most High God sees everything that we're doing. All right. That's what it's going into. Just verse 21. I'm sorry. Verse 21. Uh huh. For his eyes are upon the ways of men, uh -huh. and he seeth all his going. So it says, his eyes are upon the ways of man, and he seeth all his goings. So that's going all the way down to the speech. I want to jump the gun. Matthew chapter 12, verse 35, 36. All right. It says that everything that we do, the most I got see is all, right, all the way down to our, our speech. Everything that we conversating about. So there's no point of whispering. There's no point of going behind somebody's back or when nobody ain't around. The most I see it all. Everything being recorded. Um, read that. Matthew chapter 12. The book of Matthew chapter 12 and verse 36. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Right. All right. It says every idle word. All right. Go to um, verse 37. Verse 37. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, uh -huh. and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Right. So like the scripture says, your sins are going to be your own accusers in that day. So basically, you're going to be judged by your works. Everything that you were speaking about, everything that you knew was wrong and you still spoke it, the Most High God says, your words are going to have, you're going to give an account for every word that you speak, all right? Everything that you say. So don't. It don't matter if a brother or sister next to you or a leadership heard it or you with a, another brother or sister in the back corner or you talking low. The Most High God says everything that you say, you're going to have to give an account for. I got a question real quick. So why is it that in the day of judgment, you're not going to be able to escape? Why is it that way? When they say you cannot hide. Why is it that? Why is it that way? Who's thinking? Think about all the scriptures we just read. It says, if your hearts condemn you, he knoweth all things. What's that? Go back to Job. That's a good scripture you just read. I'm going to read this and I'm going to ask the question again. Go on, Job first. That was Job 32? Yes, sir. Job 32. And uh, that scripture you just uh, quoted, uh, your own sin is going to be your own accusers in that day. The book of Job, 34, chapter 34 and verse 21. For his eyes are upon the ways of men, and he seeth all his goings. So the Lord seeth all our goings. Read on. There is no darkness, nor shadow of death. Our goings are our doings, everything that we do. It says, there is no darkness, nor shadow of death. Read on. Where the workers of iniquity may hide themselves. So there's nothing that's covering the most high's eyes where he can't not see any, do anything. It said, another verse, it says, through the thickest of clouds, through the thickness of dark clouds, your sin is still being revealed, meaning you're still being looked upon. Read on. Verse 23. For he will not lay upon man more than right. And in judgment, he's not going to lay upon you more than right. Something that is unjust because you ain't going to be do what? Read on. That he should enter into judgment with so he, God. He's going to deal with you according to the law. Uh, he's going to judge you based on how worthy of whatever judgment you. He's going to judge you uh, with righteous judgment. So he's not going to overly judge you so you can step in judgment with him and say he was wrong for doing certain things. So he says in verse 21, his eyes are, our eyes upon all our goings and he see it everything that nothing can be hidden from him. So my question is now read verse and second Ezra, read verse uh, 61. I'm going to ask the question again. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 61. He made man and put his heart in the midst of the body and gave him the breath, life, and understanding. Yea, and the spirit of the almighty God. Read on. In the spirit of the almighty God, which made all things in search of out all hidden things. Meaning the, of the mind. Read on. In the secrets of the earth. Surely he knoweth your inventions. And what ye think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, the Lord have exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men and your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. So here's my question again. In a day of judgment, why is it that you cannot be hid? Why is it that you cannot be hid? Let me get Brother Jacob. Right here in the third row. Shalom, leadership. Um, Shalom. Revelation 20 and 12. 20 and 12. Yeah, the books and are the open. books are open. Right? But 
Why is it that you cannot hide? What's there that's convicting you? The laws. We know that. He has a record of it. But why you can't step in why you can't step in judgment with him saying that he's wrong? What is convicting you? The laws are already everything that was written that you did are contrary to the law. That's already on record. But without even using that, what is going to convict you that you can't even hide? Mm. I have to pass. Based on what we just read. Uh, let me get Mordecai. I heard Mordecai today. Uh, get Proverbs. Just hold this one. All right. You ready? I'm ready. Your mind. Your thoughts. Your, your mind. Your thoughts. You understand when, when you're in the day of judgment, you have, there's two books that's going to be open. It says the books will open. Your book and the other book, the book of life. And he's asking you things to give your response. Everything that, everything that you are accountable for. Every idle word that you've spoken. He can clearly just read it off what happened, but now you have to get an answer to the things that you have done. You can clearly say, well, I didn't feel that way, but he now knows the mind. You can't hide from yourself, neither can you hide from him. Your own conscience is going to condemn you in that day. So you are actually judging yourself in that day. So if you can't hide from yourself, you sure can't, you can't hide from God. I want to kind of add on to what uh, Captain was just saying. When the scripture just said, your own sins shall be your accusers in that day. Can you imagine that? The Lord ain't going to have to tell you where you're going to go. You're going to walk to your own death. You got his book and your book of life right before you right there. He going to say hell is over there. Congratulations. You're going to walk there. You're going to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, 1410. That's it. The book of Proverbs, chapter 14 and verse 10. The heart knoweth his own bitterness, and a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. So, again, the scripture says, bless whose conscience is not condemned. In the day of judgment, your own sins, everything that you know you done wrong is going to convict you without even the Lord having to tell you your judgment. You already know what it is because your mind knows your own bitterness. Everything that you know, you can't, you can hide from everybody else. But at that time, our minds is what's going to be judging us at that time. That's a scary thought. You can't hide from yourself. That is a scary thought. Like the Lord, you ain't, he ain't got to sit there and play the name game with you to see if you remember. Yeah, you remember, you did it. And your mind is going to remember those things and that's what's going to condemn you. Go, go ahead, officer. I want to. Okay. All right. Um, so now, with that being said, Sirach chapter 17, verse 1. Um, because like Cap said, our own mind I and mean, our own conscience is going to be uh, what determines why we get the judgment that we get. All right? Because we know better. Why? Because it was already embedded in, in us from the beginning. Sirach chapter 17, verse 1. The book of Sirach, or Ecclesiasticus, chapter 17 and verse 1. Then we're going to jump to verse 5. The Lord created man of the earth uh -huh. and turned him into it again. All right. So it's talking about from the beginning. The most High created man from the earth and we turn to it again. Talking about when we die. Verse five. Verse five. Uh huh. They received the use of five operations of the Lord. Uh huh. And in the sixth place, he imparted them understanding. All right. Go ahead. And in the seventh speech. Go ahead. An interpreter of the cogitations thereof. All right. To explain what they think. All right. Their thoughts. All right. Go ahead. Counsel. And a tongue, and eyes, ears, and a heart gave he them to understand. Verse 7 is the point. With, with all, he filled them with knowledge and of understanding uh -huh. and showed them good and evil. Right. So that's our conscience right there. He says he showed us good and evil. So that's why we tend to whisper. We tend to try to hide our conversations because it's something in us that's embedded in us that our conscience is seared. It knows when we're doing bad or wrong. All right. So that's why our own words, our own mind is going to condemn us, all right, in that day, in that time period. Um, so now with that being said, Ecclesiastes 12, verse 14. So once again, going right back into the Most High God, all right? He says he's going to judge us with right judgment. Why? Because he knows everything that we do, all the way down to the whispering. Um, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 14. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12 and verse 14. Mm -hmm. For God shall bring every work into judgment all right. with every secret thing. Every what? Every secret thing. Every secret thing, all right? So that, that long conversation you had with sis back in the day, y'all was talking about the, the new sister that just came in, about her, her dress, her uh, head wrap, how it don't look right, whatever. Whatever it may be. The Most High God says every secret thing, all right? Go ahead. Whether it be good uh -huh. or whether it be evil. So whether it be good or whether it be evil, it doesn't matter. No matter what you do, it says you're going to be judged by those things. All right. Um, let's go now to the next step. Let's go murmuring. Let's get murmuring. Murmur. A have suppressed or muttered complaint. Grumbling of disapproval. A low distinct but often continuous sound. A soft or gentle utterance. Right. So now go back up. It says a half suppressed or muttered complaint. All right. So usually it says that you're complaining. When you're mumbling, you're muttering your voice. Basically, once again, so nobody hears you. And it says you're complaining because you disapprove of something. Something you don't like. Something you don't approve of. You don't agree with. All right. Uh, first, before we go there, Jude chapter 1 verse 16. Jude 1 16. And then we're going to go to Exodus chapter 16 verse 8. So now, once again, let's see what the scriptures have to say about us murmuring, all right? So once again, this is a, another example of evil conversations, the conversations that we shouldn't be speaking about. You shouldn't be going to a brother or sister or a group of people talking about something that you don't like, all right? And it's truth. Or in, even on your everyday lives, all right? First and foremost, because we do have examples where it's been brothers and sisters that don't agree with the things that happen in here as far as um, the garments. Oh, I don't like the food that they serve. You know what I'm saying? It's not what I like. See what I'm saying? Those are different things. Those are murmurings, things that you disapprove of. All right. Um, Jude chapter one, verse 16. Jude, verse 16. These are murmurs, complainers uh -huh. walking after their own lust. Right. So what are murmurs? Walking what? Walking after their own lust. Right. It says though, there are those that walk after their own lust. They don't like something. Something that they disapprove of. Right. So they got to speak about it. All right. Go ahead. And their mouth speak of great swelling words. They speak great swelling words. They don't care what they say. All right. Go ahead. Having men's persons in admirations because of advantage. All right. So now first Corinthians Exodus chapter 16 verse 8. Let's see once again. When you murmur, or if you're actually murmuring about a brother or sister, who you're actually murmuring to? Because you might not know who that actually is going against. All right? You think you're speaking evil of that brother and sister, but you're actually speaking or murmuring against somebody else. Uh, read that. So, right, what the verse is going over, like he's saying, is that's, that's somebody that murmurs to somebody else to make himself look good for a certain type of advantage. All right? Or a certain type of power. Go ahead. Yeah, you're good. The book of Exodus, chapter 16 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, this shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat. And in the morning bread to fill, bread to the full. For that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which right. ye murmur against him. You murmur against who? Which ye murmur against him. Right, so when you complaining because you disapprove, you don't like something. Or you're trying to get that position. You're trying to make somebody else look bad so you can look better. You're actually murmuring against the Lord. All right. Um, let's get the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. All right. And then we're going to go into the, an example, another example of murmuring. And that what happened to our forefathers when they actually did that. All right. And how the most I feels about it. Um, the, Hebrews 13 and verse 5. The book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. Mm-hmm. Let your conversation be without covetousness. Right. So why would I use this scripture to explain murmuring? It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Same people. Anybody else? Anybody, 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 somebody. All right. Um, not Mordecai. Um, my brother, Michael. Michael, Michael. Oh, what's your name now, bro? You changed your name? Yeah, Zadok. Zadok. All right, yeah, Zadok. Sure. All praises. Sure. All right, what you got, bro? Can you read the scripture again? Um, 13 and 5, please, sir. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13 and verse 5. Uh -huh. Let your conversation be without covetousness. So um, when, you, when your conversation or when you do something that's bad and you're speaking about someone else, it's really you being covetous because that's where it's coming from. 
Right, right. So you have that covetous spirit. You feel like you can be better, a uh, top dog, better than that other person. Yeah, and it's like the scripture that we just read um, in Jude chapter 1, verse 18. You're basically trying to defame that person to try to make yourself exalt. You're trying to exalt yourself more. All right. Um, let's get an example of that in the scriptures. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1 through 3. Numbers chapter 16, verse 1 through 3. So it says, let your conversations be without covetousness. All right. But let's see why. The book of Numbers, chapter 16 and verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Izhar, the son of Kohath, uh -huh. the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. So they did what? Took men. They took men, all right? But how were they able to took men? They actually, they had to speak to them. They had to say something to these men to gather these men together, all right? There's no point. I'm not just going to go grab grab men and then they're going to follow me. No, I got to persuade them. I got to say something to them to make them want to follow me. All right. Um, go ahead. And they rose up before Moses. And they did what? And they rose up before Moses. So in order for them to take men and them rise up against Moses, they had to have said something to these men to make them want to rise up against Moses. All right. So once again, it's going into don't let your conversations be in about covetousness. So we're going to see why. All right. Go ahead. With certain of the children of Israel, uh -huh. 250 princes of the assembly, uh -huh. famous in the congregation, men of renown. All right, go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, ye take you too much upon you, uh -huh. seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is among them. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. Right. So basically what they were trying to say is, is that y'all doing too much work. They thought that they could handle the work better than Moses and Aaron. All right. So obviously they have some type of covetous spirit of the position that they were holding. Um, verse 11, 11 through 14. Verse 11. Uh-huh. For which cause both of that both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the lord right so now this is moses speaking to him he says you and the men that you brought with you it says there all y'all are against the lord all right why because like we just read when you murmur you don't murmur against men you murmuring against the most high god all right go ahead and what is aaron that ye murmur against him uh-huh and moses sent to right. call so there it is right there it says what is aaron that you murmur against him all right so he's telling you exactly what they were doing Got something. also too that's an example of what we read earlier he that hided hatred with lying lips mm -hmm. what they said in uh, verse three it says you take too much upon you they like they said it like they was trying to give him a break or give him a solution to his problem like you got too much stress you got your word too much mm -hmm. you got people that's that'll help you we're wise too, but at the same time, they was they was trying to take his place. They were trying to take his seat. Right. And they were trying to throw these, what do you call that, flattery? Trying to yeah. puff them up so they can at the same time bring them down. That's an example of that. Mm. Nice. Uh, verse 12. No, verse 11. 11 on down. Verse 11. Uh-huh. For which cause both thou and thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? Uh -huh. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram and the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. It is a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land that floweth with milk and honey uh -huh. to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. Right. Go ahead. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey or given us an inheritance of fields and vineyards. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. Right. So the reason why I wanted to read verses 13 and 14 is saying that the people didn't want to follow Moses because they felt some type of way. They was in disapproval. They didn't like the conditions that they were in when they were in the wilderness. So basically what it's showing is that the men, when it goes into Korah, they actually look for certain spirits to go against Moses with. They weren't looking for brothers and sisters that were actually following Moses. They were looking for those who was uncomfortable as well, all right? Those other complainers. So that's going right back into um, Sirach, the 13th chapter, a beast cleave it to his light. You're going to look for other spirits that's going to have the same type of mindset that you have. And then what y'all going to do, y'all going to gather together. All right. Um, verse 24. So now let's see what was the end result of that. Speak unto the congregation, saying, uh -huh. get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, 
Dathan and Abiram. Right, because they were murmuring against Moses. All right, a man that the Mosai set up. Go ahead. And Moses rose up and uh -huh. went unto Dathan and right. Abiram, and the elders of Israel follow him. Uh -huh. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you. From the tents of these wicked men. Right. So the most I called them wicked men. So that goes once again. When you see these type of spirits in the congregation, you're supposed to depart away from them. Why? Right? Because you're going to be consumed right along with them if you continue to go along with it. All right. Go ahead. Verse 26. Uh-huh. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, I pray, I pray you from the tents of these wicked men and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. All right, go ahead. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah and Dathan uh -huh. and Abiram on every side. Right. And Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents and their wives and their sons and their little children. Right. So the people started to depart away from these spirits. All right. Verse 32. Verse 32, uh -huh. and the earth opened her mouth right. and swallowed them up right. and their houses and all the men that appertain unto Korah and all their goods. Right. So now you see the judgment that actually came upon them because they were in those wicked deeds. All right. They actually started to murmur against Moses and the Most High brought judgment upon them. And he told the other people, he told them to separate from those type of spirits. Um, let's get Judges chapter 5 verse 11. So once again. Why are we going over these things? It's because at some point in time, like the scriptures say, we're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts. That's the, the part, or uh, that's where we're at right now, all right? We're in rehearsal, all right? Rehearsal is practice. Everything that we read in the scriptures, like the scriptures say in um, 2 Timothy 3.16, is profitable for doctrine and instruction. So we have the instructions on the way that we're supposed to govern ourselves, right? In our speech, the way we act, the way we talk to each other, the way we eat, Right? So right now, we're supposed to follow these instructions that we have because at some point in time, there's going to be uh, uh, action is actually going to have to be applied. All right. We're going to actually have to perform these things. Uh, read that. The book of Judges, chapter 5 and verse 11. Uh -huh. They that are delivered from the noise of archers uh -huh. in the places of drawing water. Right. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Right. So right now in this captivity, we're supposed to rehearse the righteous acts. All right. And that's coming down all the way down to our conversations. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us. Subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.